Hello, 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 and welcome to Peyton's Flowers. Today we will be doing a hanging spray for a funeral. We do lots of funeral work here at Peyton's Flowers. It is the one side of the flower business that we don't really like to talk a lot about, but there's lots of you out there who are interested in learning, and if anybody can learn a little something from me, that'd be great. So we, I did have a couple of requests to see a hanging spray, so we're gonna give it a shot today. All right, so the one that we have the order for is a mix of orange and yellow and peach, that sort of color, and it's going to be pretty much straight up and down. It's going to hang on a hanging rack. So we're gonna go from there. I'm going to start with our basic leather leaf, and we're gonna green that out. setting your width and your length right away. And of course that can all change as you progress through the piece. But your basic length and height. So you wanna cover this hook for sure, but you don't really need to go too far up because then it's going to be a little bit top heavy and topsy turvy. So we're just going to basically cover that. You can always go a lot longer on the bottom if you want, but not so much on the top. And this piece in general is just going to be your basic diamond pattern. We have a really interesting green to use in this today. The recipe calls for Xanadu leaves. And we actually had them. We don't always have everything in stock all the time that is in these recipes. But today we did, so that's going to be fun to use a different greenery that we don't normally get to use. So that's that's a good, it's a good thing. It's a goodie. So as you can see, that is our basic shape. I think I should turn the camera up a little bit more. There we go. So that is our basic shape. So now I'm just gonna fill a little bit over the top, but there's gonna be a lot of flowers in this. So we don't really need that much greenery on your front face, but we will add some just a few pieces just like that to cover our mechanics before we get going. New snippers y'all, so good. Love them. So funny when you're in a, a trade or I don't know what the word would be, but things like these make us so happy. All right, so there again is our basic shape. And again, it's just the basic shape. So we can tweak it at any point, make it higher or more angular. These uh, leather leaves can be shortened and you don't even notice, so that's a good thing as well. We're going to start with a line flower and today we're gonna to use Snapdragons. So we're just gonna clean that stem. You don't need those leaves there. The reason we take the greenery off our flowers is because this greenery is sold in flower shops because it has a long base life. It lasts the longest, but the greenery that's on your flowers, for the most part, that's the first part of the flower to die. Um, your, your total arrangement can still be beautiful, beautiful and fresh, but if you have some leaves in there that are wilted, it makes the whole thing look wilted. So you want to remove those to prevent that from happening. So we're going to start again, setting our height and our width, and we're going to just do our height or our length in this case with these snapdragons. We have so many little snapdragon babies at home ready, or actually some of them are planted already in our hoop house. 
I'm going to start saying who posts because I did have a comment from a lovely lady saying she would love to see a tour of our greenhouse. Well, I have to clarify, it is not technically a greenhouse. It is technically a hoop house because it does not have the second layer of plastic that a greenhouse would have. It's just one layer of plastic and we don't have a built-in heat source. We just have a heater in there right now and we cover things with frost cloth at nighttime. It is not technically a greenhouse. Anyway, we have lots of little babies, little baby snapdragons, both planted and still under grow lights. And they are doing fantastic. I am so excited. I've never grown snapdragons before. So I'm so excited to see if it actually happens. It'll be fun, that's for sure. And to have all of this stuff at my disposal, y'all, my goodness gracious. Like this stuff is not cheap. Anybody who knows the floral business ordering this stuff in, we are here on an island. So shipping cost us just as much as the flowers almost. So if I pay say $10 for a stem of something, I almost, I pay probably $8 in shipping. So our costs are extremely high here compared to if you're on the mainland. So to have these things at my disposal that I can use an extra stem here or an extra stem there and it not come off the bottom line, it's gonna be so amazing for us and for our customers. Exciting, exciting, exciting times. All right, y'all, I think I'm going to start with roses. And I'm going to start with roses because uh, compared to a lily or a tulip, which is going in here as well, a rose is stronger. It doesn't bruise as easily unless they're white. White roses would bru bruise very easily, but these ones are not going to bruise. So while I'm working here and, and maneuvering things and putting things in around, this is going to be the toughest flower. So even though a lily is the star of the show, kind of, it is your big focal flower. Um, if I was to put that in first and then I'd have to maneuver everything around it, I'd probably be bumping it and hitting it. And by the time the arrangement was finished, the lilies would no doubt be bruised. So we're gonna start with our toughest flowers first. And I have a little bit of quick dip here. I always dip my roses in quick dip just to give that extra bit of support to the rose. It's gonna make it last that much longer and bloom more beautifully. So I believe I have one, two, three, four, five, six of the, this color rose, and I'm pulling off any guard petals that are damaged. If the guard petals are not damaged, they do not need to come off. Sometimes the guard petals can be the prettiest petals on the rose, so they don't always have to come off, only if they are damaged, but they are there to guard the rose from any damage happening. It is a natural thing that happens with roses. They do have outer petals to guard, to guard the inside of the rose. But as you can see on that one, that is where most of that ombre color is. It's just beautiful. That's four. Okay, so that is our first set of roses all in place. Now I'm going to put some filler in. So we're going to use this Ostromeria, which is beautiful. Ostromeria, one of my favorite flowers, long lasting and beautiful, just beautiful. It has that wild feeling, but formal at the same time. Just pulling off some of those leaves again for the same reason that we did it on the uh, snapdragons. You can even see for a perfect example here. This is a perfectly fresh Alstromeria. It just opened yesterday, but look at that leaf. It's already wilting. So you don't want that in your arrangement. So you can clean that up. There we go. Now I have another rose more of a peach rose. Oh, I have one more of that other one. I'm gonna get that in there first. 
one more of this bicolor ombre rose. And I'm gonna go over here. There we go. Now this is a peachy orange rose. Again, we're gonna clean up those petals. Oh my goodness, this is stunning. Dip it right in the center there. So I think we have a half a dozen of these as well. Clean your rose before you cut your stamp because your stamp should be cut and immediately used. The faster you can get that into your arrangement, the better. Roses seal very quickly. So you don't want that stamp to seal up so that it can't suck up the water. So I have to remember that I am using some tulips and because tulips will grow on their own after, while they're in the arrangement, I can't point them down because if I point them down, they're just going to turn back up towards the light and they're going to look funny. So I can only put them upward standing so I can remember to use some more roses on the bottom and leave some room on the top for the tulips. Wow, these roses are beautiful. Again, when we are um, we are here on this island, on Newfoundland, uh, so we have to order everything from Ontario or further. So we don't have the pleasure of going out and picking our own flowers from wholesalers. We just have to order from pitchers and we kind of get what they send us. So sometimes we get really lucky and we get beautiful flowers. Other times there is a little bit of a disappointment that is uncontrollable. Um, but today we are really lucky to have these beautiful orange. I believe they're called creamsicle, but I could be very wrong. Not just a little bit wrong. I could be very wrong. All right, two left. So as you can tell, I don't really have a game plan here. When I'm arranging flowers, I kind of set my shape and then you just start filling in as you go. And every time... I see, I, I take a second look, you can see that there's a hole. Okay, so right now I see there's a hole here. So that's where my next flower is gonna go, and so on and so forth. Beautiful. All right, we're also going to put those lilies in that I mentioned, so those are going to fill in these big gaps in the center here. All right, we have so I'm gonna put in those tulips that I was referring to because those have to have a certain spot and a little trick to using tulips in anything like this, because they have a softer stem, if you take an old stem that I just used from something else and I can poke my hole with a harder stem and then insert my tulip into that hole so you don't crush your tulip stem. There we go. Tulips are not the easiest thing to use but they're so, so beautiful this time of year. I can never resist. Beautiful, I love that. All right, y'all, this is the greenery that I was referring to. It's called Xanadu. It's beautiful. I'm gonna insert some of those. Oh, I broke that one. So that's what I was referring to with the tulips. So if your stems aren't a woody stem, it could be very easy to break. So just have to be extra careful. Look at that nice, big, beautiful one. And there we go. That makes a pop of difference, that's for sure. So we can definitely see we need some more color up here. So we have some Gerbera daisies. And we're, again, we're gonna use these mostly around the outside because we have the lilies to fill, out, fill in the inside. 
that's two. We just have four of these pops. So natural instinct would have you put that up here, but I don't want that four corners look, especially because these are so bright. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom just to give that asymmetrical look so your eye doesn't go to all four corners. That's beautiful, I love that. All right, I have some light yellow creamy carnations to use in this. I'm gonna use those. Because your flowers are hanging downward you need to insert insert your stems nice and deep so nothing falls out on you and we are almost done folks Beautiful, love it. All right, now I'm gonna move on to my lilies that I've talked about. Beautiful Asiatic lilies, so they don't have any scent. Don't want a lot of scent going to funeral homes or hospitals or anything like that. So we tend to always use Asiatic lilies other than Mother's Day or occasions like that where we know it's going to houses, but anything that's going to public spaces we always use asiatic lilies look at that just pops beautifully so i think one more and we'll be done I'm move that rose out of my way there stunning 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 all right, uh, I still see a little bit of a hole over there. I think that I need to go in the cooler and get some other things. So just three more of those bicolor roses. I'm going to dip that. I'm just going to add that right. So to all you florists out there, you know how hard it is sometimes to keep the recipe to what the recipe itself says and not go over budget because every stem has a cost and everything is measured out and added up for you on these recipes. So it is hard sometimes to keep to that recipe. I do try my best, but we always end up adding a little bit extra. That's why I say about growing, it's going to be so special to be able to use extra st stems that we have at our disposal. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I think it turned out beautifully. I hope our clients are gonna be happy as well. Uh, remember, if you got anything at all from this, please like and subscribe to our page. We appreciate it very, very much and it helps us out. Um, especially if you wanna see more of this fun flower shop content, as well as our flower growing content and our wreath making which we will be back to really soon with wreath making we've just had so many other things on the go right now but anyway thank you again we'll see you next time bye